So I have this odd um, thing about me that um, I love reading about near-death experiences, and um, I love listening to interviews. So um, there was this interview in this, about this study, so you had to read it, but you could listen to the guy, actually, well, several people talk about near-death experiences. And one guy, I loved his story, you know, the typical story, you go through this black tunnel, and then he said there's this super bright light speaks to you at the speed of light. And I love this description where he said the, the light, he said, was um, liquid living light. And he said in the, before the light, he said he felt absolute love, like just unconditional love coming at him. Um, and he's resuscitated, which is good. He has two girls. Um, and in the study, when they study these people who have all had this experience of near-death experiences and going in front of the light, they all report the same thing, just this feeling of absolute love. And the study was, does it make any effect in their lives? And believe it or not, it does. Um, where all these people who have been in front of the light afterwards, um, they strive for unconditional love. And I like this line from the report where it said, um, it's no longer this type of love that if you're nice to me and respect me, then I will love you. Um, you could treat me like garbage, and I will still try and love you unconditionally. Now, secretly, uh, that is one of the things I pray for the most. Uh, I'm a very grumpy person, but like, I really do want to be able to love unconditionally. I also want my hair back, but um, <laughs> what I really want out of God is a heart that just is the, you know, pours out love. Uh, without any, doesn't matter how you treat me. I, I want that. And so I read that study and I liked it, that they strived towards unconditional love. And I kind of believe in coincidences or little signs from God sometimes. So later in the day, um, I was meeting with uh, one of our parishioners, who, a young man who left here, went to California, fell in love, got married, came back here, um, he didn't want to raise, he, they had a child, a son, and he didn't want to raise in California, so they moved back here, just an infant. And um, so he came to me, see me and he said, you know, I, um, he said, you know, he, he came from a really good family, I know his parents, and he said, my parents showed us love. And then I fell in love with this um, great woman, uh, but he said, it's actually when I held my son in my arms after he was born, that for the first time in my life, I felt just unconditional love pouring out of me. He said, you know, my parents love me, and with my wife, you know, I love her, but there's something in it for me. He said, just when I held my son, all I had was unconditional love for my child. Um, so he came, and he was asking a favor, and that is he wanted me to baptize his child, but his wife is unbaptized too, and they both want to start this religious life. I mean, he's always religious, but they want to start this religious life with this child where they dedicate themselves to love. Well, how the heck can I say no to that? So I bet what I love is that just, just as the study said, these people who go in front of the light um, strive towards for unconditional love. And when he said, you know, it was just pouring out of him and they want to make that part of their family. So they want to want her baptized too. Well, of course I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm a romantic. Um, but I really do think that's the will of God. But the point is this also. So this morning, uh, both of them were baptized. She received her first communion. But I love that image that the one law that Christ gives us is unconditional love, uh, where he says, this is my commandment. And he says, uh, Love one another as I have loved you. Um, what he says is agape, which in Greek is not just love, but it's unconditional love. And I love that for this reason. If you look at the entire Bible, um, in the book of Genesis, when we're in the Garden of Eden, there is one commandment. And the one commandment, I'll simplify it for you, is really unconditional love. When it says to bear fruit and not to eat from the tree of life, I won't explain that whole thing, but trust me, 
Uh, the commandment is about unconditional love and do not act selfishly. Well, we fell. And then when we lost paradise, what we lost is that one commandment. And the idea is that human beings were created in Genesis to live in this paradise where we can't help but just let unconditional love pour out of us. That's what we're meant for. Uh, but since we're not there, what we get is laws. And the first thing we get is the Ten Commandments. And then in the book of Deuteronomy and Leviticus, we get 613 laws. And then you get, by the time of Jesus, literally thousands of rules that you have to follow. But the prophecy of the Messiah was when the Messiah would return, he would restore us to our true natures. He would restore the universe to the way it was meant to be. Where instead of having thousands of laws, he would restore religion and humanity to its original image. And the original image is one law, unconditional love. And so you hear it in today's gospel. And he gives it at the Eucharist. Now in the Gospel of John, just let you know this. At the Gospel of John, um, when at the Last Supper, the Last Supper goes with the commandment to love unconditionally. And it's his di Jesus' dying wish. And every time in the Gospel of John, there's an image of the Eucharist, and there's a lot of them. The bread of life, the manna. Um, it always is coupled with this commandment for unconditional love. So if I say the Eucharistic command, it's not only to celebrate the Eucharist, but it's really in receiving the Eucharist, what you're praying for is that your greatest desire of your heart, if you receive the Eucharist, is to try and love unconditionally. That's actually the Eucharistic command. Love and the Eucharist are one command. Um, in the Gospel of John, he always pairs it together. And so, like, um, for us tonight, as we celebrate the Eucharist, what we're hoping is the desire of our hearts really comes to be unconditional love. I was actually shocked last week because somebody came into the office and they said, I told your fam my family about your homily a couple weeks ago. I have to be honest, I do not remember what I say from week to week. Um, so it's always new to me. Um, so I said, well, what, what did I say? <laughs> and she said, um, well, you said we, us Catholics do not follow the Bible. We follow the gospel. And I said, yeah, that sounds like something I would say. <laughs> and she, my, she said, my family asked, what do you mean by that? Well, in the gospels, Jesus gives us one commandment, unconditional love. We follow the gospel. In the Bible, you have hundreds and hundreds of little laws of no cheeseburgers, no shrimp, no this, no that. You know, we have one commandment, and it's the Eucharist, that we who live in the resurrection, we strive for love. We who feed on the body and blood of Christ, the greatest desire of our heart is that we can love unconditionally. And Jesus says the world, will, they will know you uh, how, on how we love. Um, how well we celebrate the Eucharist is really how much we put it into action. And putting the Eucharist into action is that, yeah, like, I'm a very grumpy person. You know, everybody's broken and has their faults except for my mother. Um, but our Eucharistic desire is not only to receive the Eucharist, it's actually to live it out. That like the young father who holds his baby and both parents feel unconditional love pouring out of them. They want to continue that the rest of their life. Like those who had near-death experiences who see the light, afterwards what they want is to strive after unconditional love. That study should be said of us. And so together, let us stand.